Beautiful little fish, back he goes. We'll get straight out and see if there's another one. Hi guys, and welcome to the Sportfish Spring Spectacular. I'm Hope Croston, I'm the product manager for Herdy and Grays. What I'm gonna do today is on the beautiful front and long crag trout fishery in Northumberland, I'm gonna take you through a few methods for early season still water fishing. Now, the sort of situation we've got today is it's actually quite cold. The temperature's been dropping over the last few nights. We've got a, a little bit of a stiff breeze that's pushing and it's sort of keeping the temperatures down a little bit, even though we're sort of in early spring and we've been getting some nicer weather. So I, I had hoped to sort of start off and, and do a little bit of nymphing, a little bit of dry fly fishing, but because it's cold this morning, I am gonna start with fishing some attractor patterns and some lures, um, just to see if we can get a few fish doing that before later on hopefully fishing some of the nicer methods like the washing line and things like that. Um, gear wise what I've set up with I have one of the new Grays 10 foot 7 weight wings um, I've got a tail reel on there but I've also got uh, a midge tip uh, one of the new Grays midge tip lines that'll be coming out next year and on the end of that I've got a very long leader um, which is probably somewhere in the region of 18 to 20 feet of six pound fluorocarbon. Now, I've got a single fly on. The reason I've gone with a single fly is because of that leader length. I'm gonna be throwing across the wind and I wanna try and keep everything nice and clean and not run the risk of getting any tangles by having multiple flies on the cast. So what I'm gonna do is fish this fly, which is a, a fly called the Wagon Warrior. It's basically a, a white Zonka type pattern. Um, most importantly, it's tied on a jig hook. So with a big offset bead that it's got on it and the jig hook, to some degree it will fish inverted. The reason I'm using that is I'm fishing over quite a lot of weed. Although there's a good depth of water, the weed comes quite a long way off the bottom. So what I'm gonna do is make quite a long cast because I wanna get outside of that weed fringe and I'm gonna let the fly drop into the deeper water beyond the weed edge and then fish it back. So we'll have a few casts and see whether we can pick a fish or two up. Now because I've got a bit of a, a breeze pushing and I've got a weighted fly and I am going to stick my glasses on, always well worth doing. Now I am going to go straight in with quite a long cast. Usually I would advise you to start shorter. But in this particular lake we've got quite a lot of marginal weed. So I am going to kneel down a little bit just to put myself in contact better with the flies. If that rod tip's lower and you're in a more straight line path, you have better contact to the flies. If I stand up, keep the rod high, I'm sort of isolating myself from the fly. So I'm keeping my contact and to start off with I'm just figure of eating it back. Not fishing too slowly. I'm fishing a streamer type fly or a lure. So I want to try and provoke some degree of an aggressive reaction out of the fish. At least to start off with. The end of the cast, I'll come on the hang. I've just seen a fish rise there. And although I've got a lure on, I am going to cover it just in case I can tempt it into having a go. No, try another just in case he's there. No, but that does bode well for later. That's the first fish I've seen rise properly today. So hopefully they're becoming a little bit more active. 
take that little knot out. Now that first cast and that second short cast didn't yield anything. So what I will do is this next cast, I'm gonna let it drop for five seconds. So tighten that up. And I'll make a slow five count in my head. Now what that's doing is letting that fly gain a little bit of depth. But what I don't want to do is immediately start fishing very deep. I don't actually know what height those fish are cruising around at. So what I don't want to do is fish below them. Generally speaking, fish will be far more apt to come up in the water column for a fly than they will to be good down after it. Typically, they're looking upwards when they're cruising around looking for food. Next cast, I'm gonna put this out. I'm gonna fan it downwind a little bit. And let it drop for 10 seconds. One of the main things you'll see I do a lot of times when I'm fishing and I've said this before quite a, a few times is if things aren't happening I will try to make them happen and that'll be by combination of things either changing the retrieve changing how long I let it sink sometimes changing the fly pattern changing the angle I'm casting be it a crosswind downwind even upwind a lot of the time just to see if I can attempt to fish to have it and then set me off on the right track for the rest of the day or at least for part of the day because things change a lot when you're fishing weather conditions change fish move insects hatch a lot of things over the course of a fishing day change there's nothing worse than sitting doing the same thing over and over and over again so, try another cast. I've angled that one up the wind a little bit. Get back down in contact with everything. I'm going to let this one drop a little bit deeper again. I have just seen another fish rise. It's encouraging despite the low temperature I am seeing a few fish just sipping at the surface which means that maybe the washing line or even the dries might be a good option oh there's a fish now just down the bank from it always a good sign So what I'm going to do is I'm going to have a last cast here before I move a little bit further down the bank. As always, I'm going to ride me luck a little bit. I'm going to put the cast out. And then I'm going to try and fluke one on the winding. Not really fly fishing, but when it's tricky, sometimes needs must. No, nope. right, I'm gonna have a little walk down the bank and fish off that platform and see if we can hit a little bit of deeper water. Right, we'll give it a wander. Right, so I've wandered down the wind a little bit, I'm coming onto this platform. 
um, you can actually sort of access slightly deeper water from this bank rather than where we're up in the corner um, it's quite a basic thing but it's actually easier to move than it is to re-rig change lines change flies and I'm not convinced that changing lines just yet is the right thing to do so what I'm going to do is have a few casts in a different location with the same rig that long 18 20 foot leader midge tip wagon warrior on the point still the white one to be honest if anything I'm going to change the fly color next and then after that we'll start changing lines changing techniques based on what happens in the next five minutes so again I am going to still put a longish cast out I'm not going to start too short the reason being the fish that I have seen have been moving with a little bit of range if you if you're new to still water fishing it can be a lot of times that you, you always tend to think you're doing something wrong and you don't know whether to change methods or to, to stick with the same method and move places really good rule of thumb is just to look around the lake and see what's happening now so far today i've seen a few fish caught probably six or seven maybe that um, but it's not on fire there's not fish getting caught everywhere which maybe suggests the fishing is a little bit slow for some reason probably just the temperature like I said, we have had a lot of temperature change in the last few days again. Seems to be the way it's been all year for me. So far anyway. I'm just sort of looking out up the valley. It is actually getting quite misty. Which might mean the temperature's going down still. Which is not what we hope for. I was hoping for a lovely spring day, a few buzzers, an odd rising fish, and it doesn't look like it's happening. Okay, so, so what's happened? We, when we were down on that downwind bank, we did actually see a few fish get caught up here on the upwind bank, and I did sort of reason, well, maybe it's a little bit warmer. I've come up here, it is definitely warmer, um, I have actually seen um, a few fish rise, there's a few buzzers around. But they are very, very sporadic. I have got the dry fly rod set up just in case. And I did have a few sneaky casts with it. Oh, actually there's a fish. Now, I fished those dries probably for 10 or 15 minutes without a take because the fish were just moving around too much. They would rise on my left, they would rise on my right, and they weren't tracking. So what I've done is I've, I've put the intermediate back on. I've put an out and out tractor fly on, it's actually an olive worm. And I've started fishing it a little bit faster and more aggressively. And lo and behold, first chuck, we've got a fish. So we'll play this one quite quick. It's not a particularly big fish. It's a lovely, nice little rainbow though. We'll get him, try and get him in the net, get him back, and see if we can get another one. It's, it's really amazing how big a difference a degree or two in temperature can make. We've actually fished for probably close to two hours this morning with very, very little action. And then suddenly it's warmed up a little bit. We've made another move, it's probably the third move we've made today. And almost straight away we get a fish. Here we are, love a little rainbow, slipped the uh, hook out in the water, my hands nice and wet. Beautiful little fish, back he goes. We'll get straight out and see if there's another one. It's after lunch, I've come up onto the top lake uh, and I've managed to get on this point which is sort of on the downwind bank. Um, now a lot of times, like I mentioned earlier, fish will often follow the wind and although it is cold and the wind has actually got colder than this morning, uh, I'm going to have a little go fishing 
down along into this corner where the wind's blowing, sort of hoping that it's it's actually pushed some of the fish down. Now, because it's cold, I've I've gone over onto the intermediate. Like I mentioned this morning, I really did want to dry fly fish, but it's really not going to happen, I don't think. If the wind had backed off and it had warmed up my mind and got it, it's gone the other way, the wind's picked up and it's gone colder. Uh, and it actually feels a little bit like it might snow, but what we're going to do, we're not going to give up just yet. We're going to keep going. We're going to do a little bit of fishing in this downwind area. Intermediate line. I've got that white wagon warrior zonker on. Fishing a 10 foot for an 8 marksman. Really good fast action rod in that 10 foot 8 weight for casting a little bit further particularly when you've got to deal with a cold wind and I'm just fishing that down nice and slow occasionally speeding up there's a take straight away bump it a couple of times go back to the figure eight speed it up Keep sort of trying to entice it that was a good take that came to nothing unfortunately but it's always worth with that keeping going in case they're still following it and then always come onto the hang at the end of your cast bring that fly up and hang it you never know if they're still there or not unfortunately that one isn't but that's encouraging we've had two casts and we've had a take almost straight away put another one out Strain it up, let it drop a little bit. Right, a figure of eight again. And lower water temperatures often fishing slower is better because the fish are a little more torpid, they're not as active. Not always the way, but it's usually a good rule of thumb. But I will still mix it up. <clears throat> we were just fishing that that back I'm on that white zonker again a little bit deeper in the water and just right at the end of the tree really on the hang we've had a we've had a fish pick it up actually quite a nice fish by the looks of it quite a clean one <clears throat> Interesting that fish was just right on the edge, just past the weed. A little bit slightly deeper water. There he is. In he goes. And that is actually a beautiful fully tailed rainbow. And that little tungsten headed white zonker. And that is a beautiful fish. So we're going to slip this back. I'm going to wet my hand, give you a nice little look at him before I slip him back. My hand's nice and wet and cold. There he is, beautiful rainbow, lovely big tail on him. I'm going to slip him straight back. And there he goes, none the worse for his wear. That's a nice fish, probably, to end the day on. The light's going, it is getting cold, and I'm quite happy with that. We've not caught loads of fish today, it has been a tough day. The conditions have been all over the place. But a few fish like that, what more could you want for a bit of spring trouting? Thank you.